Think about if you can make uh, if you can uh, if you could make a classroom environment where you can have one adult for every three children, or three adults for every one child. Think about how much that could impact, impact that, child's, that child's learning. Exploration, we're not necessarily gonna be able to send people out into the areas of space where, we're going to, where they're gonna to need to be. If you wanna be able to set up habitats, robots will be a part of that mix. Agriculture is probably the place where you can make the most money right now. And it's not sexy, but it is definitely an area where we need robots. In addition, who is going to be deciding this future? And I would like to say here at the University of Michigan, we are going to, we are in a great position to do that, so that's my lab, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's our students, the, the, those are my students, we have two fetch robots, we do lots of great stuff. Um, but in addition, to our group, uh, the University of Michigan actually is, um, we, are, we have started a robotics institute as of, uh, as of, as of 2016. Um, we, are the, we are in the top two of robotics programs in the United States. We have over 40 faculty. I can't even count how many students, it's in the hundreds. Um, in addition, we have a $75 million state-of-the-art building that is, going to be, that is going to go up in 2019. Michigan is a great place to do robotics, and we are fortunate to have also great people that, that study neural networks. All of our students are asking for neural networks and robots right now. And so this is really, this is really a great time to be at the intersection of those two areas. And so really, I'm just going to say, I'm going to stop here. This is what we're looking like in the future. And I thank you very much for your time and attention. So, uh, Before I forget, I'd like to present this uh, certificate to the speaker. <laughs> directed autonomy, as you call it. Uh, and in, in, in my thoughts, autonomy goes beyond goal-directed autonomy, in the sense that you have to choose your own goals from some general motivations. Right. So an autonomous robot, in my view, should uh, so involve being able to, to generate its own goals. Right. What is your take on that? Right. I, 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 I don't think about it so much right now. Um, I think about it from the, I think that's our goal as, as roboticists is to be able to, to say here's a here's a here's the scene that we want to have happen and then then make that happen. I think uh, I think we will come to the point. I think this is going to be the generation beyond me that is going to say all right now we have the ability to have robust systems that can perform at this level and achieve these these goals. What do we do next? How do we start to bring? How do we start to brainstorm? new types of goals, right? Uh, and I think my, my colleague John Laird thinks of this as task ability. So I didn't talk about task ability, but you wanna be able to start to say, all right, you know, robot, I'm giving you not just a, a new goal, but I'm giving you a new space of tasks, a new sort of motivation, let's say. And then it figures out what the goals are. And then from the goals, it figures out how to achieve that in terms of actions and, 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 and motion. I don't. I think we're just at the beginnings of where robots are going to be able to, to do these things robustly and reliably. So we're not quite there yet. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Can you uh, come up if you have a question? Mm, there's a line. Me, can I ask one question? Yeah. <laughs> so um, if I have a robot, I would like to ask the robot first to do is assembling IKEA furniture. Right. Yeah. So that always uh, annoying me, even though like I said, their furniture is always easy to assemble. Yeah. So uh, my question is, uh, how long? Uh, what are the challenges for the robot to assemble IKEA, IKEA furniture, and how long does it take uh, for having that robot equipped with that um, capabilities? Do you think? Yeah. 
So, I, so it's, it's, it's interesting you mentioned IKEA furniture because that is a common task that we, that we have in, in robotics right now. Um, really what, what the, so you, if you want to use a, if you want to instrument your IKEA uh, parts with motion capture or AR tags, we have systems that can do that right now. And you, and you also have to identify the affordances that go on. This is, you know, this is how you screw something in, not just pick and place it. So you can do that with a lot of, you can build, you can engineer a system with lots of manual intervention. The hard part is perception. If you can't perceive the, the, the objects, then that really limits what you can do. Um, and, so, uh, and so really it's perception, but then being able to give the robot the ability to, to, to understand everything on its own would be the next step beyond that. Yeah. So thank you for your talk. Um, in the videos you showed for the controller simulations, the physics engine looked a bit, let's say, funny. Yeah. <laughs> so can you comment on that? And, yeah. uh, and how do they really adapt to new situations, how you implemented it? Right, right. Um, so I usually defer that to my student, Eric, who, who, who's great, and he developed the physics system on, on, all on its own. I think what you're, what you're noticing is the, uh, what I call the smooth criminal effect. Uh, so it does that sort of Michael Jack, have you, everyone's seen that video, where it leans over and it has, and essentially what it has is overpowered ankles. That makes the that makes the motion look really weird. And so, so getting so right now it has a rigid foot. Your foot does a lot to, to provide conformance to surfaces, and uh, and also uh, we have a musculoskeletal system that performs actuation in, in, in a different way than what we have in a rigid body, um, a rigid body sort of ball and socket or hinge joint uh, type dynamics. And so, really, what you're seeing is a very roboticly uh, over stiff. Uh, control that where the ankles are doing much more of the work than, than really what a human system could do. Yeah. And, and how do they update the controller uh, logic to new situations? Uh, there's an inverse dynamic. So in every state, one of the things that is being learned is an inverse dynamics uh, system. So inverse dynamics is really doing the work of generating the low level controls for each state in the finite state machine. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Very nice talk. Impressive stuff. The question about one of your slides, you said you wanted to be able to take Robot X, uh, what was it, Robot X to do task Y in environment Z. Yeah. Doesn't that completely skirt the issue of different robots being well suited to perform different tasks in different environments? I'm going to assume that you have, that we will start to, that you will have robots that will be fully capable of many different things that will be generalizable. I will, it is bounded by the physical capability of the robot. So I'm not saying that you'll get a Roomba to be able to make you breakfast. <laughs> Um, but, but assuming that, it's, that, that, the, that the task is within the physical capabilities of the robot, we should be able to, to program it through demonstration in that manner. Yeah. Great. Last question. <clears throat> You're focused on the autonomous robot, right. but um, it was really interesting to see that you introduced your presentation with a, a, a paraplegic person. Right. But in a sense, uh, that situation goes all the way from maybe brain-computer interfaces with direct control using his eyes and all that right. to a fully autonomous robot system right. working with him, sort of a hybrid being. Right. Um, but it can be a lot more. It could be enhancement of all of us are handicapped because we don't have six arms type of thing. Right. Yeah. And we're trying to do things. Um, I suppose you can't really think too much about that, but it's it's almost like a separate area that's in some ways more rich than just an autonomous robot. Right. For example, yeah. conversation partners and right. having your own community and extra arms and stuff like that. I, I think uh, as as uh, so my so Henry, uh, if you if you see a TED talk, he he basically lays this out in that we are all disabled in some way, way, shape, or form. Right. Yeah. I can't. Uh, I cannot myself move at 60 miles an hour. But through the, through, the, through, the, through, the, through the help of a system device known as a car, I can move at 60 miles an hour. Yeah. We are really talking about enhancing human capability, all human capability. I think what we're really highlighting with that, with that work is that it has to be accessible as well as capable, right? We can't leave people behind. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's thank the speaker again. And if you have any questions, chat will be here. Uh, if there's any questions, of mine. So thanks again. Thank you very much.